Did you have a game on Saturday? As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, AdoptUSKids, and the Ed Council. AM Minnesota Today. Kelly Nygaard stops by from the Faribault Area Chamber of Commerce and Tourism. I think she gets to go to Windy, Chicago, the Windy City. Don't the you? rumors are true. That's this weekend. It's for the Chicago Travel and Adventure Show. It's right next to the airport. So it's technically in a little suburb called Ro called Rosemount, but it's annexed is what I'm told. And we're going to be representing the mini road trip, which is a collaboration that's a couple years in. It's won an award with Fairbo, Owatonna, and Northfield talking about the benefits of our region. And for this specific show, we're also partnering with Austin. They're going to have a representative there as well. Um, because of the success of the mini road trip, we've actually had several other communities say, how can we become part of the mini road trip? How can we get involved or kind of co-brand as well? including Lakeville has come to us, um, Austin, and some other vendors, including Red Wing. And so we've had some conversations there. And so we're kind of testing the waters to see how big can we make the mini road trip without it losing that effectiveness. And so this is going to be a great opportunity to partner up with Austin and bring those people potentially from Chicago that are there learning about opportunities for vacation and little getaways. It's an easy drive up to our area. And so we're going to be there we set up Friday, we're going to be there all day Saturday, Sunday, handing out literature, explaining um, all the great benefits of our communities and the wonderful attractions and really engaging people. And then we'll come back that evening and back to the grind on Monday, but I'm looking forward to it. So then you get to share the cost, Austin, with a booth, right? Yep, yeah. So, I mean, that helps as well. And then um, it's not just Fairville, like I said, it is the mini road trip. So we're going to be promoting the region. And our hope is once they get here that then they'll spend some dollars, get some hotel rooms, go out to eat, and, you know, take in some of our local amenities. Yeah, well, that's a cool idea. I remember yeah. when you received the award. That was awesome. Not every day of the week you get an award, you know. No, from Explore Minnesota, nonetheless. So... It's, it's been a really good campaign, and we're excited to see its continued growth um, because regionally we do have a lot to offer, and so it's a really nice partnership. We do have a lot to offer. And if you add in Austin and Red Wing and Lakeville, there'll even be more to offer. Exactly, yeah. If we can get somebody up here to take a two-week, you know, spin around our area, spend a couple days in each, everyone benefits, and then they're going to have a really positive experience, which they'll go back, they'll tell their friends, their family, and that'll spread you know, word of mouth. Yeah, like a wide old fire. Yeah. So Chicago this weekend. You get to do any sightseeing or you have to work the whole time? Well, I'll have the evenings free. So I'm hoping to get to do a little bit of out and about in the evenings. Um, I'd like to see the bean. <laughs> and there's a few other things on my Chicago wish, wish list. I did look up the temperatures. And at least right now, they're not really looking any warmer than here. So I'll have to be bundled up. But it'll be a really nice chance to get out and explore that area hopefully a little bit in the evenings. They have some great places to eat, I know. <laughs> That's what I'm told. Oh yeah, some great places. This past weekend, Chamber had their annual gala event and Kim Anderson was honored with a proclamation by the mayor, I understand, proclaiming, yes. was it last Saturday, was Kim Anderson Day in Faribault, Minnesota? Right. So it was really just an evening filled with celebration, and one of them was kind of the torch passing from Kim Anderson to Nort Johnson. And the mayor did read a proclamation um, declaring February 3rd, 2018, Kim Anderson Day, but it was read at about 8 p.m., so she really only got about <laughs> oh, four hours. Yeah, that didn't so he told her he, he'd probably let it slide that she could have the full 24 and keep it until 8 p.m. the next day as well. Um, When's her birthday? She had that a week or two ago. Oh, okay. I was going to say, so. do it on her birthday next year or something. Yeah. So then additionally, um, in addition to Kevin Verachek speaking, Steve Cole had some very kind words about her leadership within our community for the past, you know, couple decades. And then Senator Jasinski also spoke to that note. Um, so it was a very nice... Uh, both our incoming and outgoing chairs had some words, and then she was presented with a custom Florida de lis necklace as a thank you wow. for her efforts nice. um, and the leadership she's shown the community and the chamber over the last 19 years that she's been in that role. And of course, so. the 
Nicholas was And sure. Werner Farm Seed Dundas for quality seed at reasonable prices. Give Paul or Gene a call. Their number is 507-645-7995. Werner Farm Seed in Dundas. Other KDHL Agro Boosters include Bart Jackson Insurance Agency, Downtown Faribault, and Agro Connor Crop Management Specialist, your pioneer sales representative in the Faribault area. By the way, tomorrow's AM Minnesota show, I'm going to have to be on my very best behavior. Who the do you mayor, have? Kevin Baracek, will be mm-hmm. here, and our city administrator, Tim Murray, will be in the studio. So, What's well, the topic I, of conversation? I don't want to end up in the clinker. Well, various city issues. Okay. You know. They're coming to my office today. Wow. Uh, We've got this beautiful conference room that they've requested um, because Highway 60 is going to be seeing some renovations in the next year, and they're doing an open house this evening, 4 to 7, where the public can come and give some feedback, look at the plans, and get a better understanding of what they're going to be seeing in 2019. Yeah, they did one for another project here last week, wasn't it? I think so. I didn't make it to that one. Yeah. Anyway, so the hours there are what? Four to seven. Four to seven. I like those meetings, frankly, because you can mm-hmm. get in, get your questions answered, get out. You don't have to sit through a long presentation. You don't have to sit through other people's questions that you might not be interested in. Yeah, it's very informal, kind of come and go as you please. It'll be a nice event. Obviously, I have the advantage of not having to go far, so I'll be popping in because it's 10 feet away from my desk. So that'll be a good event as well. Um, very educational. Um, the gala we were talking about before, I also want to mention that Gary Lazares was honored with Ambassador of the Year following years of dedicated service, but he, he decided it was time to retire his green jacket um, and take a step back. We do have some other new ambassadors, and he's still kind of available as a little bit of a mentor just this morning at Business Before Hours. He kind of coached an ambassador through part of hosting that program, but we honored him with Ambassador of the Year as an award. Um, and... We also gave an overview of the 2017 accomplishments that came from Nate HP of HP Jewelers. And then we looked forward to the big rocks that are in our jar for 2018 and some of the goals we have there as we ushered in Heidi Nelson of Heidi's Clubhouse and Be My Guest. She's our incoming board chair. And we've got some big things that we're going to be working on this year. We're going to be doing a survey. People can keep their eyes open for that. And we'd love for everyone to fill it out so that we can better service our members. And we also have some 2040 vision projects. Um, the 2040 vision was done a couple of years back and we've really decided that we're going to do what we can to support the city and um, do what we can to pr- make the progress and help some of those things come to fruition and so there's a dedicated task force within the chamber that's been meeting and they're going to grab on to some really good projects and dig into that and so we kind of brushed over those briefly as well at the gala. It was a really nice event, great attendance. Of course, KDHL Power 96 did have representation there as well, which was fun to see. Jerry Grosskreutz was there, looking spiffy. With his lovely bride, yes. Yes. So it was it was a nice evening. Jive and Ivan and the Kings of Swing played. Did Jerry dance? You know, I did not see him on the dance floor. You'll have to you'll have to bust his chops about that. I'm surprised his wife didn't drag him out there. You know, maybe I just didn't see it. I was kind of running around pretty busy that evening. Well, I thought you were in charge of photos. You need to get a photo of Jerry dancing. I was in charge of the photos. Actually, you need to get a video of Jerry dancing. (laughs) Put that up on our website and go viral. Yes. Next year, I will make sure that that happens. Because Jerry's kind of a mainstay at the gala. We, We kind of anticipate seeing him every year. So next year, I'll have to drag him out to the dance floor along with Louise and get some photo documentation. Oh, make sure that you know he's actually working <laughs> the floor so to speak yes <laughs> <laughs> sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you there oh that's all right so it was a really it was a nice event and we're looking forward to our next events because we always have a full calendar um, some of the next things on our on our docket would be the farm business breakfast you guys are of course sponsors so you'll be hearing a lot more about that as we get closer um, we've got our speakers lined up, including Bev Durgan and Megan Roberts, Lynn Kettleson. So some nice U of M extension educators in that mix. And it, historically, it's been a lunch. This will be the first year as a breakfast, but we're looking forward to it. And a little bit different dynamic. It is a farm to table, so it's all going to be locally sourced as well. But we think it's really going to be a fantastic event. And where's that? 
That'll take place at the Knights of Columbus Hall, March 20th. That's a Tuesday morning. Um, breakfast will be served at 7.30, and the program is from 8 to 9.30. Cool. There is more information on our website, and tickets will be available very soon for purchase. So are you still running the Main Street or working with the Main Street program? Yep. Um, Main Street is one of my big rocks. Um, the development of our downtown and the events that do that. And so it's a multifaceted program. It's a four-pillar approach, and one of them is promotions, and we also have the fundraising component. And we've combined those two things for our annual Faribault Flannel Formal. We've set the date for March 24th for that. That's a lot of fun, and we're looking forward to that. We additionally have design committee, um, economic redevelopment, Org. And last year, some of our big things that we accomplished in the last year was the Small Business Challenge, which launched Rough Acres and was able to help them. And we're hoping to do one of those again in the future because really coming off the success of that one, we'd love to see more storefronts. Um, but we work with a lot of different aspects. Our design committee worked very diligently on a banner project and some benches, some parking lot signage, and you'll be seeing those changes in our downtown getting a little bit of a, you know, some additional perks as we install those in the coming months. Probably by midsummer, we're hoping to have 20 benches that tell the story of Fairbow and different little historic components, um, parking lot signage that'll be more clear and draw the eye, wayfinding signage, and then that banner project. By midsummer. That's the hope. You know, obviously, there's the manufacturing, the hanging process. There's still some steps to go through, but the majority of the work is done and in place, and we're ready to roll it out. It's just buttoning up a few things. So we're really looking forward to getting those downtown and getting some visibility to that work. And the old banners just get tossed or what? You know, I'm not sure what the process with that is. Might be recycled. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure, but the new ones are going to kind of tell a story of Faribault. We've got different sections, and they're really beautiful with a new floor de lay that's um, been designed specifically for Faribault. The banners are going to tell a story. Yeah, they're going to have sections, is my understanding. Um, it's going to be, there's going to be a mill district, a riverbend district, the historic downtown district, um, which will kind of help navigate people through that. Um, those will be throughout the community. And, of course, we're in the KDHL district. Yes. It's our 70th birthday this year. It's know? a pretty big year. 70 years is a long time. And what is what celebration are you going to have? 70 years. Well, I don't know. You're asking the wrong person there. <laughs> but 70 years is pretty cool. That's a huge accomplishment. You know, 1948. <laughs> that was 10 years before I was born. It's when they flipped on the, the station. <laughs> 70 years is that's a so fantastic yeah i think it's pretty cool so anyway didn't mean to i'd love to see you guys celebrating your 70th anniversary by joining us in the parade of lights next december oh that's a good idea that'll be december 1st of course bruce burkhart's meyer was the honoree last year um and he went down i don't know if you got to see his float it was a custom design boot that lit up. No, I heard about it though. It was pretty fantastic and we're looking forward to it. We've already set the date for December 1st. Last year was a great time. We had 33 floats and we'd love to see it grow even further, but KDHL should definitely get in there to celebrate 70 years. For a first year, 33 is very good. We were pretty happy with the turnout and we got really lucky with the weather. It was still fairly warm and we didn't have a lot of snow on the ground, so I think now that people have had that positive experience, they'll come back for future years. Well, even if it's chilly. I mean, we're Minnesotans. We can handle that. Just put on a few more clothes. Last weekend's activities proved that. All of the special events going on up in the cities and all the outdoor activities, I think, show that people are willing to go out for a fun event. Yeah. Well, and I get a lot of positive pub after the fact, though. Really? Uh, a lot of people were complaining about how cold it was. Can't change the weather. In Can only dress for it. They should never have another Super Bowl. <laughs> you know, that's what people from Philadelphia and those places are saying. Some of them. Mm -hmm. Many of them. I thought they did a really great job of rolling out the red carpet and hosting a wide variety of events and different things. And they received a lot of compliments, too. But it seems like, as always, the negatives seem to outweigh the positives. Yeah. I don't know why that is, but it's kind of tradition. I like to focus on the positive attributes. Yeah. Like our beautiful downtown, historic downtown Faribault. 
Yes, and I, I love our downtown. Um, I'm very happy to get to continue the work that we do down there. Um, we've also got our car crew series set for the summer, and we're working on some other fun projects as well. Um, that'll be the third Friday of every month this summer. We always have music, we've got some food options, and a fantastic lineup of cars. So When's the first one? The first one will be in May, and let me just verify here. The date? Oh, you know, I don't have it in front of me, but it is the third Friday of May. So okay. I want to think fine. that that puts it at like the 18th, if my memory serves correct. And we'll, of course, be promoting those on our website, throughout the community, and on our social media. Yeah, that's been growing by leaps and bounds. Yes. Um, the last couple of years, our car club showdown has brought in well over 200 vehicles. We've also been lucky enough to engage with groups like the U of M Solar Vehicle Club. They brought that down in the U of M um, race car, the experimental race car, which has been a lot of fun to have those teams on hand for asking questions and engaging and just learning more. So we get everything from that to Model Ts, and it's been really a fun dynamic to watch that grow. Yeah. Was it back to the 50s? Is that the one up in the fairgrounds that has, you know, yep. thousands of cars? Yeah. <coughs> Don't want to get that big. No, I don't think we'd have the capacity for that um, because we do love having it in our downtown. But, you know, the growth that we've seen has been a lot of fun. And last year we had a few gals that took it upon themselves to kind of dress in a 1950s way, you know, the poodle skirts and that, which I thought was a great time as well. Yeah, I saw them down there. They were having fun. Yeah, it really kind of added to the dynamic. It certainly did. And it's good exercise, too, walking up and down Central Avenue looking at all the vehicles. Yeah, and I think it brings in a lot of people to our community. We get a lot of really positive feedback that they enjoy the event, they enjoy seeing the vehicles, and a lot of them did not realize some of our store offerings or some of the great architecture we have as well. So while they might be coming for the car cruises, they might come back again to shop or dine or just enjoy our community another date. Yeah, Nort uh, gave me the honor one time of picking the best of you know, oh, did you? For show, so. What do you use as your calibration to determine? Of, a lot of pressure on yours, truly. <laughs> but it's a personal thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I think is great and what some other person thinks is great are two different things. Yeah, and it, it varies a lot, especially some people specifically like Camaros and others are looking for, you know, an original body well, that's, or, that's you know. The, that's the route I go. As original yeah. as possible is the route I go. Yeah. So where do you fall on the rat rods? Do you enjoy them? <laughs> the rat rods. Yeah, they're kind of the rusted out, just very... Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I'm quite that original. Yeah. But um, I'm trying to remember the vehicle I picked now. And I can't off the top of my bald head. And you you have one of the shirts, too, don't you? Oh, sure, yeah. It was very nice. Those are kind of fun little shirts. We get a lot of comments on them. Me most definitely. Yep, I've worn it few times here at work. Yeah. Makes me look like a mechanic. <laughs> Anybody knows me knows I'm no mechanic. Well, it's all in fun. It supports <laughs> a good event. Yeah. Well, nowadays uh, you couldn't work on your own vehicles anyway. They're computers, basically. That's one of the joys of the older vehicles. Yeah. They're actually vehicles you could do your own car work on back in the day. Yeah. They're very simple. And the design components are just beautiful. You know, I love checking out. I, I wouldn't say I'm knowledgeable on cars, but I love the car cruises. It's just so fun. The energy of the event, but also seeing the range of vehicles, the bright colors, and the different design components are really interesting to see. Yeah, and good crowds. And I think adding the food component was yeah. a big plus. People do like to be able to grab a bite to eat and kind of stroll through there, which is always really nice. And again, like I said before, this is kind of a healthy endeavor because you're walking up and down Central mm -hmm. Avenue. What's better than walking for an exercise? Maybe Very swimming. Little. Yeah. It yeah, well, it get a little bit of cardio in if you've got one of those little fitness trackers. You can add to your steps for the day. So you can actually get a nice sandwich and walk off the calories. All oh, easily, easily. Oh, and then cool. we always have a DJ, so you could even dance a bit if you needed to. Yeah, I didn't see a lot of people dancing. <laughs> But they were cranking out some good tunes. Mm -hmm. Memories. That's what those car shows are about, you know. Yeah. Everybody remembers their first vehicle. That is true. What was your first vehicle? It was a very short-lived vehicle. Um, I had a little Sundance. It was bright red, and I had it for about a week. Oh, my. And a gal ran a stop sign, and we collided, and that was about the end of that. 
And then I purchased a, um, a Taurus that I had for the following seven years. Wow. So. That served you well. It did. It got me all the way, part of high school, all of college, and into my career. That's so. fantastic. My first vehicle was a Dodge Charger, 1973. Oh, that sounds cool. At a Landau roof. It was tan and white. Gosh, I wish I had that now. Then I got a 1976 Chrysler Cordoba. You've had some and cool vehicles. It did not have Corinthian leather in it. No. It uh, had cloth seats. It was brown. I've always gone with function and price point over the cool factor, but someday I'd like to have a really cool little sporty vehicle. Yeah, new gadgets are prompt me to make new vehicle purchases. You do like to have the... I bought the Cordoba because, believe it or not, it had a clock in it. <laughs> That's the main reason I bought it. Really? Uh, what year was that? 76. It was a 76. I mean, I bought it a couple of years after I bought it used. 78, I think, is when I bought it. Oh, wow. But we're not here to talk about vehicles. Well, sort of we are. <laughs> so this, um, the empty buildings downtown, the, the, what was the name of that again? The, the, the contest that you had. For oh, that. yeah, our, our business challenge. Right. The Main Street Business Challenge, it, yeah. It's going to happen. We're going to have another one, you think? Well, at some point in the future, you know, we'd like to do it sooner rather than later because we did hear a lot of positive feedback, and I think it spurred some other innovation as well. We could only, you know, award one winner, but we have seen at least one of the other businesses that awesome? open, which was great to see, and we've had a few other businesses recently open as well. Um, couple new different businesses downtown where we've got a lot of potential for even more growth. So we've got some great architecture, some great spaces, and we're hoping to see a point where every building is full with thriving businesses and we're working daily to, to get there. So we're excited and Main Street ourselves, we're gonna be working a couple days downtown um, in the coming future. We've got a little second story space, which will be nice for me to be able to get out and walk and. Um, have more more face to face time with some of our downtown business owners and building owners, which will help really engage that. So we're looking forward to that as well. Um, but we we do hope to run another contest like that again. I'm not sure of exactly the timeline, but it would be great to see something like that happen again in the near future. Now this chamber event that you have every year is it open to the public or is it just chamber members? The gala or yeah. the yeah the gala. Yep, anyone can purchase a ticket. Um, they do have to reserve it in advance. Um, they can either do that by calling the chamber or by going online to our website. Um, and I would say there's a decent mix. We definitely had some non-chamber members there as guests or just to learn more about the event and our current endeavors. But we do have a, a well, a good representation of our current members of the chamber as well. So we actually had about 320 people in attendance at the, at the Legion on Saturday night which is a pretty good turnout. Yeah, is that typical? Is that about what it is? I would say, you know, it ebbs and flows a little bit, but I would say that that's definitely a good number, probably about average. And I don't know that we could have fit a whole lot more, maybe one or two more tables, but anything beyond that, we would have been at capacity, certainly. So then they had to move the tables for the dance floor? We had left a little bit of space. We would have definitely had to move them had we had any more tables, um, which is kind of why we left a little bit of a space there. So, and we did have quite a few people kicking up their heels and dancing, which was fun to see. Well, Jive and Ivan, the kings of swing, I'll get yes. hot. <laughs> I mean, at least have to tap your toes. Yeah, they always do such a fantastic job, and we were really pleased that they were able to come and perform. They sounded yeah, fantastic. They're fantastic. Now, I don't know if you know where the parking study is. They're still doing the parking study downtown, right? They are working on that. I am not up to date on that, but sure. I do know that Nort sits actively in on that and um, has been going to those meetings and that they're progressing forward. But I'm not sure of what the current revelations are with that. Yeah. Well, next time we visit with Nort, we'll have to ask him about the parking study. Yeah. Which is about, I think this is the fourth one since I've been here. There have been several, and there's a really great quote that I found that said, anywhere worth being has some parking issues. Um, if you think about going up to the XL Energy Center, no one is expecting front door parking. They fully expect that they'll park half a block away in a parking ramp and walk. And we don't have ramps, but there are plenty of public parking spots. Um, I get that there are mobility issues, which is certainly a 
constraint for some, um, but I, I personally try to park a little bit further away and leave those good spots for those that have a necessity for closer parking. Well, it's very nice um, of you. So our parking situation is not perfect, but I think it showcases that the fact that there's a demand to be downtown. People want to be downtown. So it's there's a silver lining as well, well is that we've what? got good things going on to bring people to our community. Right. Last time Nort was on, I know he mentioned that he counted some spots around the Paradise when he was at an event there. And yeah. That there were plenty of open parking spaces. And that was a sellout show, I believe, as right. well. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, it depends if you're willing and able to walk a little bit. There, there are usually spots within a reasonable distance. Yeah. I'm glad you pointed out that if you go to the cities, you have to walk a lot. Yeah, and I think it's just expected there. And and personally, I kind of enjoy on a nice day strolling a little bit because then I get to take in the the windows. Some of them do very creative window displays and some of that architecture. So, and it gives me a chance to look around and enjoy my surroundings a bit. Now, just before we leave, Kelly, you said there's some survey that's going out? We are going to be doing a survey to our members, um, just asking a variety of questions about how we can better serve them and what they're looking for from the chamber so that we can really find out what the big rocks in our jar should be and kind of plan our future endeavors based on that and our resources accordingly. Okay. So this is not a community survey, it's a survey of I do think it'll be extended to some non-members as well, um, but the focus is really going to be how we can best utilize our resources and engage the business community. Wow. You're getting a phone call. They want to take the survey. You think so? Maybe. (laughs) I don't have the questions handy. Yeah, we've only got about a minute left of the show. Is there anything we didn't touch on, Kelly, that we should have? Um, You know, I want to thank Douglas Diamonds. Just this morning we were there for our business before hours, which is always a great event. And I'd also like to let people know that coming up next week on the 15th, we're going to be at the Cheese Cave and Bluebird Cakery for business after hours, which is a great networking opportunity. And we'd encourage everyone to come. You can learn a little bit more about the Chamber and what we do at those events. And it's a great first meeting to come to. So I'd I'd like to... get some food there, too. Maybe some cheese curds. Probably. Yeah. You like the fresh cheese curds, right? Yeah, I like them squeaky and, you know, I don't like them... I mean, I like them fried, but I prefer them raw. And they do a great job with that. I love the Cheese Cave. Yeah. It's a little dangerous because I'm going to be right above the Cheese Cave and Bluebird. So I'm going to have all the coffee and cheese access in the world when I'm downtown. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thanks, Kelly, for coming in. Thank you for having me. Certainly appreciate it. Kelly <laughs> Nygaard from the Faribourian Chamber of Commerce. You're in tune to KDHLAM Faribault, Minnesota.